Hello folks and welcome to this video and if you're watching this you almost certainly know Jean Tot, the outgoing FIA president who uh, well is pretty much a who's who of motorsport. Started off his career as a rallying co-driver, ended up being in charge of Peugeot at the height of their successes in the WRC during the Group B era but also in terms of when they were winning in the Dakar and Le Mans before moving across to Ferrari where he oversaw the changes from 1994-1995 before he left the team around the end of 2006-2007. If you look at the dominant era of Ferrari, Tots involved in that, if you look at the dominant era of Peugeot and Dakar, or at Le Mans, or when they were at the top of Group B in rallying, Tots at the helm. And even in the world of rallying, if we talk about when he was co-driver, People he was co-driver to included the likes of Ove Anderson, who ran Toyota Team Europe in his period of domination, Guy Frekelan, who was in charge of Citroen in their time of in their height of WRC domination for a while, um, Akin Warmbold, whose son Anthony Warmbold was a staple of early noughties WRC and the European rallying scene, and Hanu Mikola, who many still today will describe as the greatest flying fit of all time. In Formula 1, his drivers included the likes of Berger and Alesi for 95, the last V12 win in F1. It also included, for the longest time, Michael Schumacher from 96 to 2006, and his teammates, the likes of, for example, Eddie Irvine, Rubens Barrichello, Felipe Massa. It also included the signing of the likes of Kimi Raikkonen, who went on to be the 2007 F1 World Champion. It's... really spectacular to think about, isn't it? But, that two minute aside, done. He's recently given an interview to race fans, which you can find in the description below, in which he's asked about the title battle between Hamilton and Verstappen. And, of Verstappen... Todd says, Max is a bit like Kimmy, very straightforward, very talented, and they have limited interest and they focus on it. Indifferent. I don't necessarily think that's the case with Verstappen. I think he's a bit quieter about his interests. He doesn't enjoy the social media side of things. He doesn't enjoy, like, he's not one of the people who does the streaming like Lando Norris or anything like that. He does the iRacing kind of stuff and the sim racing side of it, but he doesn't like doing the streaming side of it to the same degree. However, with Lewis, he says, I like Lewis. Of course, I do admire his longevity. Of course, you know it's true. It's easier when you're driving for the best car, best team in the long term. But he has the passion. I think the fact that he is engaged is very good. It doesn't mean I always agree with the way he's engaging, but he has his beliefs, he expresses his belief, so I do like that, I do respect that. Sometimes I feel like it could be done in a different way, but the fact that he wants to be engaged, he wants to be a player, and matters where he does feel it matters. I do respect that. And this is the bit that I wanted to pick apart. Because this would be something that would generate all kinds of buzz in the controversial headlines bit, which is why I'm doing a video on it, of course, because uh, you could you could do all kinds of different spins on what Todd has said here. Firstly, I... I don't really understand where he comes from where he talks about the best car and best team when he was in charge of Ferrari when Schumacher had his unparalleled kind of domination in F1, five championships in a row. And... He also says that one of the things that helps is largely stable technical rules. Which I would like to counter by saying Ferrari in the early 2000s. Because the only way the Ferrari were able to be reined back in, if you look at, say, 2003, and when they eventually lose the dominated street in 05 and 06, it's regulation changes. It's the changes to the tyres and trying to end the tyre wars. It's the likes of getting rid of the V10 engine, bringing in the V8, and all kinds of different regulations on aerodynamics. Those are the things that end up holding Ferrari back. 
it's the things that make 2005-2006 remembered as some of the greatest F1 seasons of all time. So I would use that to counteract that point. It's not something of stable technical regulations that helps bring this kind of competition close together. It's tighter regulations. Because if you have the same regulations but they're quite broad, you're going to have somebody doing something very funny every week, week in, week out for the rest of the season. And then on the off-season, they'll have three or four different test beds. I'd say it's the kind of consistency of strict regulation moreover. Because, well, we've seen it before, same regulation doesn't change it. And in addition to that, he talks about the dominance of the likes of Ferrari. He, he looks back and says, at the moment, we still have two champions with seven championships. So in a way, the record is always potentially able to be beaten. And when I speak in my kind of pride, I say, Okay, somebody has more wins in Formula 1, but they don't have some wins in sports cars or in rallying or in cost country. So at the moment, still, I have some advantage on others on that. Fair enough. That That's really fair enough. He, he is pretty much like a who's who of motorsport. A lot of the stuff that I enjoy talking about, like rallying and the Dakar and sports cars and F1, Jean Tot is the guy who kind of brings that all together, meshes it all together. But, to quote him, doesn't mean I agree with him. One of the things I found interesting was when he talks about Lewis and Lewis Hamilton's activism. He says he does like and respect how Hamilton has the confidence to express his belief and have, have his belief so openly. He says, I feel like it could be done in a different way. Which I don't, I can't really make sense of. Because I can't think of anything that Lewis Hamilton is actually doing in terms of activism that could be considered controversial. Like, the Race Fans article makes reference to Lewis Hamilton wearing the shirt saying, arrest the cops killed Breonna Taylor at the Tuscan Grand Prix last year, which he wore during the end racism display and he wore it at the podium after he won the race that led to a tightening of rules by the FIA which also banned national leaders being on podiums at say F1 events so no more likes of Erdogan or Putin who would put on the Grand Prix for show and be able to like sell themselves to the world I'll be interested to see how that plays out in the future especially considering we've we're going to places like Saudi Arabia next weekend. I would fully expect somebody like MBS is going to be present throughout the Saudi Arabia Grand Prix weekend. But the thing is, he doesn't he doesn't say whether or not he agrees with the views. Which is obviously where a lot of that controversial, like, conversation would come in. He doesn't say whether or not he agrees with the views. I don't know if that's because he feels like if he says he does, it's going to have implications on himself, the FIA, or F1, or any of the sports that he's attached to. But... The, the, the thing that he has the disagreement with is the way that Lewis Hamilton expresses himself. Which, like I said, I don't think it's controversial. They have the option to wear whichever t-shirt they feel it's fit during the uh, We Are Asians 1 display. They have the shirts that the FOM provide them with. They have the shirts that we've seen, all, all other kinds of shirts we see the drivers wearing, including ones that say on the, the likes of Black Lives Matter. And trans rights are human rights. And love is love. So I don't get where I would come from with that. Because what Lewis does isn't actually that controversial. Like... 
he is doing so many magnificent things inside and outside of motorsport. And some of them I actually encounter personally in my own world. Outside of the realm of motorsport, which I think just shows how brilliant a person he is. But then, I disagree with how Jean Todt conducts himself. Because at the end of the day, last weekend we had the final WRC round with the era of the World Rally Car. Which has gone on for 25 years. We have Julian Ingrassia retiring as an 8-time world champion. Sebastian Ogier ending his full-time WRC career on 8 as well. And John Tott was in Qatar instead. I don't know if it has much to do with F1's bubbles, for example. But I don't recall seeing him particularly prominently throughout the rest of the triple header. And that's where I want to end things for this video. It's interesting to me the tot says what he does because not only is what Lewis Hamilton doing not controversial to say but he also doesn't give an opinion on he doesn't actually give an opinion on what he feels about Lewis Hamilton's beliefs Which is, on Todd's part, really clever. Then for somebody who, at the top of this video I told you about his domineering spells in rallying, cross country, sports cars, and F1. Some of you can't really be surprised by by the man at the helm, can you? And on that note, thank you for watching. I hope to see you around. Bye. For now.